check these bad boys out magnetic tail lights my buddy david's gonna come by and snag them up he's got a job for today they're made by part sam <laughs> gotta check them out there'll be a link in the description but look at this complete wireless double check them with the blinks yep yep looking good brake lights cool I'm gonna leave these for him. He can use them on his job today. Rechargeable, come with all you need. Pretty sweet little setup. Try these wireless trailer lights. So I guess this thing just goes in here. Going the right way. Like that. Mm -hmm. And then these things you just click on. You just click them on. Click. See? Yeah. I'm gonna turn the blinker on and you tell me which one's which. Well, that's left. And right. I'll go. They just magnet right on there. Good. I guess that's it. All right, for folks who are asking why I never went with a full tilt four, little buddy trailer this is my dad's trailer i got him a while back i call it the mini buddy because it's 16 feet full tilt now they do not make a tilt trailer beyond 16 feet beyond 16 you got stationary and this little toyota coming up on here that's it's like six inches forward of where it started to the tilt over function so for hauling all the project trucks and stuff i do I use better judgment because if you get the front start tilting, even if she's locked up, you don't really quite got enough room back there and it just seemed like more headache than it was worth. For track machines, skid steers, excavators, the wheel tractor worked pretty good because it's a short wheelbase. These things are the bee's knees. But for, again, little buddy, I wanted it for skid steer, excavator, and pickup trucks. I wanted to do everything. And going conventional old school ramps was the best bet. But this trailer is freaking nice. I like it. I like it a lot. Well, you want to hear something funny? Not my voice. But this truck is already one year old. I cannot believe that. It's actually, I'm going off of the build date on the engine that I consider its true birthday. The heart of the rig it is actually my exact birthday. And uh, that was a weird coincidence. Build date on the truck. February 22, that's February 23 now, at least I think, quick math, probably. So I wanna do a quick little one year review on it. We're gonna do the first oil change on it. Yeah, went a whole year, one oil change. We have 4,900 miles on this truck. Not because I don't wanna use it, not because it broke down, not because any of those things. I got a lot of other rigs and this one primarily just been tow rigs like I planned on it. A couple out of town trips, Doing some towing, it's worked out great. The correct gear ratio that I went with has hit right in the middle for what I want, towing wise and highway wise. I, I mean, sure you give and take on some areas, but at the end of the day, trying to have something right in the middle has worked out perfect. And I'm absolutely thrilled on this truck. A couple of things that have gone on with this truck that haven't shut me down, but just kind of like, what the heck? And I think the only one, honestly, was the tire sensor gauge thing. Every once in a while, um, the front one and then the back right two went out. I don't know why. And then they come back around. They're working right now. But other than that, that's it. Now, just like anything else that hits social media, any issues pertaining to half a dozen, two dozen, hundred trucks out of a million, I get hit up messages saying, hey, check this on your truck. Have you had trouble with your eyes? Why isn't your frame broken? Stuff like that. I'm gonna make a video shortly on the frame breaking and I got a pretty, I mean, just looking at how people load their rigs, it's only obvious why anything broke. Everything else is breaking too, if you load it like that. But the ISIN, there was a reported bad batch of ISINs that came out. I'm not gonna lie, I don't know much of the details. Something snap ring, something, something. Anyway, trucks right off the lot were failing because manufacturer, from what I heard, switched to a different, you know, distribution of one certain part, and that whole lot of them failed. And I've heard 
Low numbers, I've heard about 20 and reported up to 30. I talked to my dealer, my boy Evan up Peterson where I got this in Nampa, Idaho. He said, your truck doesn't file under the VIN number for that. So fingers crossed as always, I dove damn heavy with this. We're gonna get the first oil change knocked out and just in general, this truck has worked out great and I've been very happy with it. Yeah, I would say as an all around truck, it's way better than the 08, but you know, short track and high heavy towing, the 08 is pretty much a badass. But I'm gonna show you one thing I wanna add on to this because tomorrow, depending on whenever you see this video, but my time tomorrow, I'm gonna go pick up my new 40K rated gooseneck trailer, which is more than this truck can handle, but I already outgrew the first trailer. So I got a truck that I'm gonna outgrow. So I got a trailer that I'm gonna grow into with maybe another truck later on. So now that my voice is completely scorched, let's put some oil in it. And I got something cool I wanna show you that poor chins did not have. I don't know if this is new to the new age Cummins. It's got the turbo that's kind of turned, but you can actually get to the bottom of your oil filter like back in the day. So they don't have a relief cut in the side over here so that you can barely squeak the oil filter out in a bag or with a cap in it. It spills stuff everywhere. This one you can actually bring straight down. That's pretty neat. <laughs> well, I will say this much. The old boy that put that on there, put it on dry. <laughs> oh. That about broke me in half trying to get that off of there. And I'm already broken in three quarters, so there wasn't much left to break. All right, let's go gear up a new one. I keep them in stock, you know what I mean? I got that Napa Gold pretty much cornered the market on those. I thought I had. Nope, use that one up. Got peel filter. There's one of those. I thought I had an AMS oil one. Must have put it in the new dually. 1607, that's a girl right there. Now this is something you couldn't do on a fourth gen, is pre-fill your filter just a little bit. I mean, you could put a little tiny bit, but you had to put it in, basically you had to go like that to get a filter in those old trucks. These new ones pretty much go straight up. Now, I've been kind of on the fence about what to put in this truck as far as oil, because they say these newer ones pretty much run oil that's made for a gas engine you know, for a go-kart, didn't make much sense to me. I would normally just run, not make it a pun towards any other channels, but I run 1540 in everything. It's just simpler that way. It's one thing to keep on the wall. Some of them, granted, I'll get a different brand for a newer truck just to treat it a little bit nicer. Or for something that tows pretty hardcore, like 5500, run the synthetic blend Rotella. 1540, just the same. What we're doing here on this one, I, my buddy Tab, it runs 1030, my neck of the woods. 1030 seems like something you put in your pressure washer, synthetic or not. So I talked to old Evan. I don't like to do that, to reach out to the dealer to see what they run. But he said they run 15 or 540 T6. This is full synthetic and extreme temperature. I like hearing that because the truck doesn't really get hot running anywhere. But when you're towing heavy, it's nice to have that extra you know thing on the label so anyway this was a little bit closer to my 1540 than tavitt's 1030 because at least one of my numbers was close anyway i'm gonna give her just probably half full just enough to make a mess and then we'll slap this under there grab the big funnel well this one's just gonna take it all okay that's close enough and before we get out of control up to this point in time, there is no oil. It shouldn't be leaking underneath this truck. And I'm going to do what the guy building the Cummins didn't do. I'm going to lube up the seal. Ever watch rabbits use cars? That's what I sound like right now. Rob Pitts. Woman charmer, used car salesman extraordinaire. Coffee, or that's not my coffee. <laughs> Dumbass. 
For any of the new viewers, this is a 2022 Ram 5500, or I call it a Dodge 5500. It's got the Cummins, it's got the ISN. The ISN comes standard with the Cummins in the 45 and 5500 cab chassis. That's just the way she is. I wanted to get a Bighorn edition, but they didn't offer those in um, the 45 and 5500, so I opted for the Laramie. I'm pretty happy about that because uh, I did live in Laramie, Wyoming for a little while, so it just kind of neat to go back. It's got a great northern flatbed on it, and I've done numerous amounts of fabrication to it, beefing and stuff up under it. And for the price of the bed I paid, they wanted double to add boxes underneath. So I went ahead and built my own boxes, and they worked out slick. I actually got, you know, living quarters pretty much, and it's one of those over there. Hot lunch, maker, no problem. All my, you know, gear and everything fits all good in here. B&W turnover ball, and I'll show you guys why I got the turnover ball. Because, uh, yeah, we are going to have to upgrade the 2 and 5 16 ball to a 3 inch. Because that ball doesn't go to a 40k trailer, that's a 30k trailer. And after the oil change, we'll curl up underneath and, you know, we're going to put a little bit of extra steel under some stuff. Running a 37-gallon transfer tank, I need to get a bigger one. I'd like to get wedge-shaped. Um, they're just tricky, expensive, and, you know, then i got to get another pump and everything, so I've been kind of holding off on that. I would go out on a limb and say my signature spare tire up on the top. Uh, I've seen a couple cats kind of running that since I've done that. I've had my other truck done up for like six, seven years with it on there. It's just the most effective, efficient, purposeful place to get it up out of my way because the fuel tank's back there. There's no other spot. But I added these running boards. They are quite a bit cheaper just to buy them on eBay or Amazon or something afterwards. It comes factory with the big fender flares, the paint match to go with the Laramie. I didn't add that. That's a Laramie thing, I believe. It's got the nice headlights. And a lot of cats kept asking me about this. Uh, you know, I, I'd really like to have a bumper guard on my rigs, and I haven't actually talked about this in. Yeah, mainly because it was not the one that I ordered that they sent me, but I could not find what they were trying to advertise anywhere else. So I said, screw it, I'll modify it. But this is, I believe, a Laverne bumper. It's got a spot to step on it. You can add um, a winch bracket in there. I don't know if I'll ever do that. Um, I've never really actually used a winch on the front of any of my trucks, except for maybe twice or something like that. But the one I wanted was supposed to have a bar that goes from here out. So it strengthens this one up a little bit and just adds a little bit more rigidity to it and protects on the factory bumper down there. reason why I went with this and didn't go something else is because I did not want to knock these off. I, I wanted to keep the white on white fender flares. I really like those. Um, I know a lot of cats will say, hey, this is just a damage multiplier. Well, hell, if you get any kind of damage, it's going to you know, destroy on stuff, but I just want this to protect from deer. Beyond that, you know, it's in somebody else's hands. I'm honestly surprised I'm able to talk this long. Who else shops at Tractor Supply? Yep, I bet a lot of you do. If you don't have Tractor Supply in your neck of the woods, you don't know where you're at. Of course, every state's a little bit different, but anyway, my point being is you got really nice funnels there. Check this bumper out. You didn't know it, these 5500s are quite a bit taller than a 3500. So trying to get up over this, what is this? A Ram heavy duty super intake? Not easy. I guess before we get too ahead of ourselves, let's put the drain plug back in. I'm definitely sick, but yeah, we ain't gonna mess that up. Well, that's draining into the engine. I'm going to go ahead and DC the batteries because we're going to do a little bit of welding on the bed. Now, I don't think, hey, I don't think what I'm about to weld is 100% necessary. But it 100% makes me feel better. Did that pop back up there? Anyway, this is just to make me feel a little bit better about um, 
just the hitch where it's connected and everything. And it's fared very well with everything I've thrown at it, so I doubt that it'll get out of control from here on out, but doesn't hurt to be prepared. The battery terminals they have on these new trucks are kind of goofy. Just sheet metal. What happened to that big old brick of lead or whatever that was that fell apart? Maybe that's why, because it just falls apart. Make sure all of it goes in there. Tractor supply was doing really well for a while. About not going up in price extreme on their oil, but they caught up. They're back to, you know. Still better bang for your buck, but still expensive. So I like that big funnel. Just let it do the work for you. It's a double. How many of you guys are going to be like, hey, look on your oil cap. Cold weather climate, 5W40. I would imagine that what that means. It's a snowflake. Um, also, sun, 1030. Hmm. Well, I guess I'm a snowflake. We'll go ahead and just run the cold stuff. Where's my welding blanket? I need that, really. We're going to need that. Do you see it? There it is. It's on. It's on top of the welder. That's weird. By the way, this little welder has been an absolute hoss. Loving that. But it's gas. Let me shut that off. Flux core. Hear me out. Flux core's got better penetration and it'll burn through paint, rust, plastic, whatever. Okay, so check this out. Two and five sixteenths trailer ball. Gooseneck. Bumper pole. That one flips over and you got a two inch. Two inch is for towing like a wood splitter or a boat. Two and five sixteenths rated up to 30,000 pounds. That's what this is. But I guess nowadays you get a two and five sixteenths. I don't remember what brand it is. David and I were talking about it earlier. You can get them rated to 38,000 pounds on a two and five sixteenths. A little guy. That doesn't quite make much sense. But normally, and what you have to do in the past, is get a three inch ball. And that gets you up to the rating of the trailer. But then whatever else is behind it, you're hoping it's beefed up. Now, this, I would say, is my favorite bed manufacturer that's out there as far as this the design, build quality. But it's definitely a couple areas, and I always find out stuff like this as soon as I buy it and start looking into it. Same thing with Bandit Chipper, that thing, the bumper, the dog. I know design flaws. There's something wrong with that dog. German made. Just kidding. Pipe, you're all right, dog. But they didn't put enough welds underneath. I filled it all in. But I'm going to put a little bit more steel mixed with a little bit more welds right now. So I'm not going to be really towing any more than I'm already towing. It's just the peace of mind. This dog don't follow me around in the house for nothing. As soon as I come outside, best friend, get the ball. Yep. Good thing that head wasn't running on that prime. <laughs> get this out of the way so you can see what we're working with. They got a piece of quarter inch it might be five sixteenths they put it through a break made a nice little holster for the bmw turnover ball it's welded to the top it's welded right there pretty good welds right there i welded around the ball on the bottom here around the ball socket not the ball itself you can take that out but what they did on the sides probably can't tell but i'll just tell you right here they only welded the top piece right here to the C channel on the wall. So what I did is I welded here, the bottom piece and on the insides of both, both sides. So there's so much more structure added there by adding the welds they should have done from the factory, which I don't know why they didn't. But just to make me feel a little bit better, I'm gonna massage in this nice thick piece of ankle iron, quarter inch thick, looks like one by two. Maybe one by one and a half. I don't know. We're going to weld that sucker in really quick. And uh, i got to get my blanket down here so I don't hurt my big old beefy rear end. This is the frame and everything on these old girls. is just so much more stout. There's the bolts that I got holding my bed on right there. She ain't going nowhere. I got four different locations of tie down. One, two, three. And then the rear hitch back there has got quite a bit, actually. So four. Oh, 
the ventilation could be better down here. But it's nice you can actually get up in here and still do some stuff. That new brand of flux core I'm running is made by Yes Welders. Actually burns in real nice and smooth. It doesn't have as much splatter as standard flux core, I feel like. Went on really well, so I'm going to get the um, little wire brush action and then rattle can that and she's done. Well, there we go. That job's done. I ran the bead weld all the way. So that's not one weak point where the weld penetrated in my cross member. I just want to point that out. Pretty happy with that. I feel a lot better. Got a little bit extra more something, something going on, but I don't think that would have gone anywhere from the kick, but makes me feel better about it. I don't know why this is a new thing that people just now found out about. Been doing that since we're born. Come on now. 50 PSI, whatever. Some people say that's not an accurate gauge. Whatever. All right, we're done. Well, that's about all I have to say about it. Been an absolute treat having this truck. Trying to think of other colors I might've went with. May have been a little bit more grabbing towards the thumbnails. Might have helped on the YouTube channel a little bit, but just some about one of these rigs in white. Love it. That truck looks freaking good. Those toolboxes. It's nice to say I built those myself. They're not fully watertight. But this truck is every bit I was hoping for it. See you guys the next one. If you got one of these rigs, let me know what your thoughts are on it. I've been pretty damn happy about it. I think Haas's truck should be going by 2024. <laughs> Maybe. But I'm going to throw some def in this thing and some windshield washer spray. And we're headed to Winnemucca in about eight hours. <laughs> we'll see you guys. Thanks for watching. Later. Well, it's nice to see some things never change. Light's been on for a week. Will not take a full gallon. Why? Get together. They come in gallon jugs. What am I going to do with this? Drink it.